Welcome back to the Flipped Classroom. Our topic today is logarithmic word problems. And this is going to be one of the last times that we're going to uh, keep reviewing our exponential and logarithms. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in here. Um, I don't think you need to copy down all these word problems word for word. We'll try to highlight important things, and that's what you should probably jot down on your paper. But make sure you obviously read along. We're going to have to pull out all the, the little pieces of information here. So it says, the value V of a savings account. So, you know, in class I would underline value V. So they're going to tell you what V stands for. Um, and a savings account in which interest is compounded annually. Okay, that's going to be important. Can be determined by the following formula. So let's go ahead and jot that formula down. V equals C quantity 1 plus R to the T where C represents, so again, they'll tell you what each of these letters mean. C is the initial deposit, R is the rate, and T is the number of years for which the balance has been accruing interest. So again, they will tell you every single variable. It's your job to kind of highlight each one. So let's go ahead and jot those down again. It said C, I believe, represented the initial and for those of you unfamiliar with the word initial, that's just the amount of money you start with. R is your rate. That's kind of a nice one. They both start with the same letter there. And T stands for time. In this case, it's the number of years. If $1,500 was deposited, so if I put that much money in the bank, they're telling me that's what my C value is. In 2001, and an annual interest rate of 5%, so there's your R, what is the first year so you're finding the year, you are finding the T value, that the account will be worth $3,000. So I'm going to go ahead and list some of that information out one more time. I've identified off to the side what C stands for, R stands for, and T stands for, and I'm going to jot them down one more time. The initial amount of money I put in this bank account was $1,500, and they told me there was an interest rate of 5%. What is the first year? So I'm going to put... T question mark, that's what they want me to find, that the account will be worth $3,000. And that's the value of the account after so many years. So I think this is a problem that almost everybody can relate to. Almost all of you probably have a savings account or your parents have a savings account. And you go ahead and you start, you open up that account with some amount of money. And as long as you keep it in the account, it should gain some interest. 5% um, would be awesome. And their question is, when, in what year, will you have $3,000? So basically, at this point, I'm just going to substitute in everything I know. So in place of V, I'm going to put my 3000 My initial is 1500 One plus. Now, I want to be very careful. We've talked about rates before. You're not actually putting 5% in. That's a percentage. We need to convert that to a decimal. So if you're not familiar, you're always moving two places. And again, we've done that this year already. So if I move two places, I'm going to say that's 0.05. And I should be looking for the time, so I'm going to leave that as my T. So again, just be real careful that you change that percentage to a rate. Now, order of operation says start inside the parentheses. Always do the math in here first, and I think you can probably do that in your head. If not, grab a calculator. Uh, but 1 plus 0.05 is 1.05 raised to the T. So again, I would probably make a little side note here, you know, add in parentheses first. All right, so the most important thing you've got to get out of today is that this exponent t is only sitting on one base, okay? So if you look at this, this t is only sitting on the 1.5. I cannot multiply these two together and say it's all of that to the t power. So on all of these problems, I want you to box the base and the exponent in. Okay, and we're going to be looking for that on your paper. Box that base and exponent in. Our goal is to first get that by itself. So I have to get rid of the 1500 by dividing it from both sides. This happens to be just a nice old 2. And I still have my 1.05 to the t. Now, this is the exact same thing we did last week. At this point, there's really nothing new you're learning today. We're just really wor reading the word problems a little careful, carefully. Um, but truly, this is n nothing today should be new to you. So at this point, now that I have my base and variable alone, I'm just going to take the log, the common log or natural log of both sides, 
and it doesn't matter which one you choose to use. Just remember to be consistent. And when I do that, that's going to take that T and bring it down in front. And now remember, my goal is to get this T by itself, so I'm just going to divide out the ln of 1.05. And this is, you know, strictly calculator. We don't expect you to do this in your head ever. And, and my calculator tells me T equals 14.2066, blah, blah, blah. And again, remember, T stood for time in years. Now, the only, you know, catch on these questions, or little bear trap as we like to call them, is that make sure you actually answer the question. So I know what happens in 14 years, but let's go back. It says, what is, so here I'm reading, what is the first year the account will be worth $3,000? Well, if I told you 14 years, would that tell you the actual year? I think not. So, whoop, let me scroll back again. What is the first year? And this all started in the year 2001 here. So I'm going to be 14 years after the year 2001. So plus my answer. I would say this will happen sometime in the year 2015. Okay, so again, just a little wordy, um, but take your time with it. Besides the word part to it, it should not be brand new to you today. So we're going to do a total of four problems. Let me jump into the second one. All right, the amount of money A after T years. So A stands for the amounts after. T stands for years. So again, we're just reading it. First couple words here tell us that. That the principal P uh, will become if invested at rate R compounded 10 times a year is given in this relationship. So let's go ahead and write that equation down. A of t equals p times 1 plus r over n to the n times t. So most of you have taken a finance class, I assume, and are familiar with most of these words. Um, principal is the amount you start with, okay, what you're putting in. r again is just the rate, t years, a is the amount that we're going to have afterwards. So I just want to be clear mathematically, a of t, just like f of x, is just a fancy way to say y or you know y equals. This is not a parenthesis t. This is just going to represent one term. So to the nearest tenth, how long will it take this amount of money to become $7,000? Okay, remember, p, the principal, is what you started with. So I started with 5,300. I want it to end up at 7,000. Um, I'm always using 1 plus. It says 9%. Remember, that's a percentage. Move your decimal two places. So that's 0 0.09 divided by n is the number of times it's compounded. And that just tells you the number of times they're going to put interest on it for you. Now, they told us, where'd it go? It's compounded quarterly. So if you saw the word quarterly, what number would pop in your head? Well, hopefully you've guessed it, and if you didn't, that's okay, but quarterly usually reminds us of four. Four quarters. In our grading period, four quarters make a dollar. Um, quarterly would be four. If I said monthly, hopefully you'd think of the number 12, 12 months in a year. Um, if I said annually, hopefully you'd think of one, once a year. Semi-annually, hopefully semi strikes you as using the number two. And then notice it's to be at n number times t again. So I'm going to say 4t. All right, so remember, this should all be review. There's nothing too fancy going on here for us. Um, I'm going to start in the parentheses again. So I'm going to leave all this junk, just order of operations, start in the parentheses. The calculator will do it for you. Um, if you've got the new updated calculator, use that fraction tool. If not, I'm going to do 0 0.09 divided by 4 first. That's 0 0.0225. And add the 1. So 1.0225 raised to the 4t. But use parentheses first, so make a note to yourself if you need to. All right, the next thing we want to see in every notebook is you boxing in the base to the exponent. That 4t is only sitting on this number. So again, what that's telling me is I can't multiply these together. I have to get rid of the 5,300. So divide it out. So 
So on this side I've got my 1.0225 to the 40. Now this side, just like we did the other day, I mean these are follow the same problems exactly. This is some ugly decimal. I've got like a 1 point, I'll read it to you, 1.32075 blah blah blah. So I am storing that into A. Remember there is no rounding in the middle of a problem. You've got to store this. So almost done here. I'm just going to take the ln of both sides oops, to solve. So the ln of what I stored in A, that exponent comes down in front, ln of 1.0225. I'm going to put what I took the ln of in parentheses. My goal is to get this t by itself eventually, so I'm going to divide over the ln of 1.0225. And again, just a nice review here. I'm going to get some ugly number on my calculator. I get a 12.503 something. Okay, still can't divide, so I'm just going to take that number, divide it by 4. And I've got a T of 3.12579 blah blah blah. Now again, just before I finish, I'm going to go back and make sure I actually answer the question. It said to the nearest tenth, how long will it take? So all it wants me to do is round my answer to the nearest tenth, and I'm good to go. So t equals 3.1 years. All right, halfway home. Two down, two to go. A radioactive material decays according to the formula. A equals, this little guy is read A sub 0. Remember, that's a subscript, and we, we've talked about that with logs. A sub 0, 10 raised to the negative kt. So let's go ahead and get that down on paper. A sub 0, just a little 0, 10 to the negative kt where A is the final, so again, it tells you everything. A is the final, A sub 0, so that's one term there, is the initial, T is the time in years. Find K if 700 grams of this material decays to 550. So what did you start with, the 700 or the 550? Well, hopefully, the initial, or what you started with, is the 700, so I'm going to replace a sub 0 with that. Notice I'm not putting a 0 in. It's just that term is now 700. I want to end up with 550. So that's my answer. That's the final amount. Then there's a 10 to the negative k, and it says 8 years. So if you plug them in and you're good to go, try it on your own. I'll walk you through it one more time. But again, I would just start by boxing in this exponent is only, only sitting on the 10. Box that in. That's who you need to isolate. So I'll start by dividing the 700. I get a 0.785 blah 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 blah. I'm storing that into A equals 10 to the negative K8. I'm going to take the ln of both sides or common log, doesn't matter. The ln of A equals the ln of 10 to the negative K8, but remember that exponent comes down in front, that's that law 3. My goal is to eventually get that k by itself, so I'm just going to divide them over one at a time. I'm first going to divide both sides by the ln of 10. I get a negative 0.1047 blah 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 equals negative k times 8. And lastly, I'm going to get k by itself just by dividing both sides by negative 8. So I get a final k value of 0.013 0919188. And my last step is just to go back and make sure I answered the question. Remember, that's the important part. Did you find what they wanted? Uh, so it said round this answer to four decimal places. Find k to four decimal places. So I'm just going to say k equals 0 0.0131. And we're good to go. All right, so hopefully feeling pretty smooth. If not, you know, don't forget we're there early in the morning and after school and, and ask some good questions in class. We've got one more to go. I suggest you read this one to yourself, and if you can do this and get through it, you're in amazing shape for tomorrow. So feel free to pause me, try it on your own, and then check my answers. During surgery, a patient must have at least 40 milligrams. Whoopsie of an antibiotic in his system, the amount of the antibiotic present after K hours after administration of 100 milligrams of this antibiotic is given by this formula. 100 times point 508 to the K. After how many hours? 
and you'll notice it said K hours, so that is what we're finding. Uh, to the nearest tenth, so that's what we're rounding to, will the nurse have to administer another dose of the antibiotic? All right, well, he has to have at least 40. So I'm just going to set this equal to 40. Because I've got to have 40, in case the variable I'm finding. Notice they, they talked about this 100 milligram dose, and I just want to be clear, that's the initial amount. Um, and maybe a quick review here. When we talked about those exponential equations, we said y equals a b to the x, and we said a was the initial, and b is what we called the growth factor. Either it's growing or decaying. If that b value is greater than 1, that implies growth. If the b value is less than 1, that implies it's decaying. So, and I think that should make sense here, this number is less than 1, which means we're losing that drug, and that's exactly what the problem said. Uh, the drug is starting to wear off, and we're eventually going to have to administer a new one. So because this number is less than 1, we're losing it. Um, so back to the problem here. My goal is just to find k. I'm going to rewrite that problem down. 40 equals, whoops. 40 equals 100.508k. And basically, just keep saying to yourself, that exponent is only on this base. So from there, divide out your 100.508. Got 0.4. Take the ln of both sides, or common log. And when I do that, it's going to bring the k down in front. Uh, one last step, divide that over, and then we'll just have to make sure we actually answer the question. So I've got 1.352910. Oh. Alright, so the actual question said, after how many hours to the nearest tenth will they have to re-administer this drug? So basically, um, I have 1.35 hours, and it said to the nearest tenth. So I would say after 1.4 hours, we would have to re-administer this drug to this patient. So there you have it. Uh, we've done four problems, and hopefully you're feeling okay. Um, again, if you're not, that's okay. That's why we practice in class, and we look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Have a great night.